here we go. It's the Life Coach Pod show, and um, we have someone on the line, so I'm so excited to have a live audience. What I'm going to do today is take you through this social experiment I'm trying, which is to have a daily show at one o'clock with potentially a live audience. Um, you're invited to attend every day at one o'clock. If you go to lifecoachpod.com, you can find the link for joining in that blog post. It's in the first paragraph. If you are on the call, make sure you're on mute and we'll get started. So today, in the beginning, this is episode one, number one, and I thought I'd start it off with um, a nice pace. I have thought about some ways to do this show, and the first thing we'll do every day, just as a, a time capsule, is I will start off with the date, which it's Tuesday, for those of you who have lost count of what day of the week it is already, it's Tuesday, March 24th, and just a little bit about how I'll do the show. I'm gonna try very hard to have a live audience, hope friends will come in, and then I'll talk briefly for the top of the show, a few minutes about current events. That's mostly for the time capsule component of the show. So we can remember what was happening on the day this podcast was recorded. And then I plan to have guests, we have a lineup of guests for later this week. So I'm excited about that. And also of course, questions and interaction from the live audience. So you don't have to talk if you come in live, but if you want to, that's great. And I'll, we'll use the chat feature for that, and it should um, allow you to either hide behind your camera and not be public, and you can ask on chat by just writing your question, or if you want to come on, that would be great too, and we can get you um, on the pod. So, outstanding. Let's start with the time capsule moment. So, again, as I said, it's Tuesday, March 24th, and many of us, at least in California, have already been a stay, shelter in place, stay home for um, almost a week now, formally. Some of us, like me, whose daughter is extremely paranoid, have been sheltering at home for longer. That's because right before I started to shelter, I was out in the public, including in court, so I wanted to make sure that I did everything possible to um, prevent myself from getting the virus and make sure I, didn't, I wasn't carrying it. So I've hit two weeks already, and we've been really careful. But the time capsule moments from what happened yesterday and this morning is we've had the Texas Lieutenant Governor say, let those geezers die. Mind blowing pivot that I don't think any of us saw coming. This idea that um, we would somehow save the economy by rationalizing a certain percentage of us can just go ahead and die and that's how it will work. So um, if you didn't read that story, go look up the Lieutenant Governor from Texas that broke yesterday. This morning, Trump has come out with his announcement that he would like to return to normal in two weeks. Well, yes sir, wouldn't we all? That is, um, in my humble opinion, a ridiculous idea. This virus has barely taken hold in the United States. We have some states that still aren't sheltering in place, and we're going to see numbers go up. What I'm most worried about, and I think this should concern everybody, is losing medical professionals to the virus over time. It means the simple things like um, needing to get your, your doctor visit so you could get that yeast infection cured, or maybe you have. Uh, some sort of heart disease or cancer treatment, if we wipe out our medical professionals, we're going to be a world in a world of hurt. These are not people that we can replace easily. These are highly trained folks and we are putting them through hell right now. So this idea of returning to normal in two weeks is just nuts. And what's the point of having an economy if most of us are too miserable to enjoy it? Okay, and then the last piece of news from this week, which isn't actually terrible news, it's good news, which is there are a lot of jobs out there for people who might wanna pick up cursory income. Um, folks like me who are gig workers, we don't even get an unemployment check because we didn't have permanent employment before. There are ways to make money. Those are mostly in grocery stores, delivery services. I believe, I just saw some news in California that Safeway and Albertsons is gonna do everything possible to keep their employees safe. It's a little late. The people have been working there all this time, but we need to get those masks. First of all, we need the masks, obviously, for the medical professionals. But after that, we need to get masks and things for the rest of us so we can go out and go to the store and do those and, and work if we want to work. So if you're looking for work, some industries are hiring like crazy. Google that and you can find access to where you might be able to find work. Now, our guests for later this week, um, we have Ron Johnson coming tomorrow. He is a friend of mine. He's also a coach 
who specifically looks at athletes and what they go through when they're not able to work out the way they're used to. He did an interesting um, piece earlier this week that talked about the connection between our mind and our bodies and why keeping both in good health and in good shape will help us uh, have immunity and be healthy. So he'll be on tomorrow. On Thursday, another friend of mine, Melissa Santangelo, who is um, the groovy goddess, is what she calls herself. She will talk about self-care. She will talk about ways that you can take care of, she'll talk about how you can nurture your spirit as you um, move forward and go in the days ahead. There is going to be a lot of trauma coming and I don't think we're all prepared for that. Trauma where people we love might be dying alone and where people we love might be dying in a way that we can't even have a memorial service for them or funerals or all the things our culture is used to. So right now, working on our spirit is really important and Melissa will talk about that. And then on Friday, Heidi Kornkowski, who's a very good friend of mine, is also a behavioral coach. She coaches people with anxiety, OCD, the kinds of things that people who are phobic about germs are probably really struggling with right now. So I've asked her to come on and talk about ways you can manage your anxiety, things you can do based on where we are today. So that's a look ahead at what's coming up on the show and the guests that we'll have later this week. Today, um, normally on Mondays, I think I'm going to do something like Motivational Monday, and I'll just talk about some concepts in, uh, that I've learned through coaching that will help you manage uh, your well-being as we move forward in this new reality. So today I thought I'd start off with uh, what it means to be an energy coach. And this isn't about me coaching. This is really about you and how you can manage your energy. And it sounds super woo-woo, but it's not intended to be woo-woo. It's intended to help you make conscious decisions about the way you feel and how you choose to take in information and manage it. So when I, as an energy coach, typically, if I was coaching, I would be talking to you about what it is that you, you want to, that you're dealing with right now. Um, tips, very different from therapy, typically more action oriented. Uh, I coached someone this morning on when it is a good time for them to go visit their parents. That's a lot, something a lot of people are struggling with. What, what are the conditions that would be um, optimum for visiting your parents, let's say. So that's something that we work through today in a coaching session. So that's how coaching works. But specifically today, I want to talk to you about energy. So the goal of energy awareness is increased consciousness. Okay, I know I'm from Santa Cruz, and right now, many of you have already said, oh my God, there she goes. But the thing is, it's actually really important. And the consciousness just means you are mindful and you are aware of the decisions you're making at any point in time. So if you have energy awareness as well, you're able to then decide you could either react negatively or positively. You can manage how you're feeling about things. So I had a friend um, last week who made a mistake at work. And when I talked to her, she was just so beating herself up over this mistake. And I finally said, you, you just need to accept the mistake. It happened. It just happened. The world isn't going to end. You're not a bad person. You didn't intend to make that mistake, but beating yourself up is just dragging you down. There is no point to sit in that kind of muck right now. Embrace the mistake, own it, and move on. That's the idea of being mindful of what's going on in your head and then also how to shift that energy and being aware of your energy and shift it so that you will do better and feel better. So imagine just the, the power of that kind of um, self-awareness. It will make a huge difference in the days to come. It also can make a huge difference on the people that you know and love. Even if you're only talking to them on FaceTime, um, it, they call it the butterfly effect. That's a, this is, that is a physics concept, the idea that something that happens in one place can affect something else. It's super complicated. It's um, mind-blowing. We need Sheldon on the, on the line to explain it. He would be great from Big Bang Theory. But the notion is, the, con the concept that it's very most rudimentary is that what you do affects others. Even with social distancing, when you make that phone call, FaceTime, whatever it is to check on in the people you love, that energy matters. That's a connection and you can shift somebody who's feeling lonely or down. You can shift their energy to being more positive and having a more positive outlook. So it, it sounds trite and I don't mean it to sound trite. What I'm saying is what you put out there can affect other people. That's the most important part here. 
So if you are aware of your energy and you're paying attention to it and you're being mindful, managing your energy can deliver a sense of well-being. This is so important in managing your body's response to stress, your body's response to sickness, uh, being isolated, all of that. Managing your energy, meaning how you feel about things, and I'll talk to you in a minute about the two kinds of energy, that can absolutely deliver a very powerful sense of well-being. And that's, that is why we do this in coaching, and that's why it's really important. I'm happy to share this message with you today. So we have generally two kinds of energy. And I love this picture of the ocean. It's a, it's a huge blue wave tumbling, tumbling, because the way energy works is it's both productive and unproductive. We call it catabolic, that's the unproductive kind of energy, and anabolic, that is the productive kind of energy. They work together in flux. They move through you throughout the day. And sometimes the unproductive energy really does have a productive purpose. And we'll talk about that. And sometimes the anabolic energy can make you annoying as heck to the people around you who are feeling really catabolic. So you need to be able to be aware of what you're putting out there and then manage it to meet the moment. Meaning if you just walked into a room of people who just lost someone, your very, very anabolic positive energy is not necessarily the right energy at that moment. You might need to really bring it down. Um, same with catabolic energy. If you walk into a room of happy people and you're Debbie Downer, you're going to not be met with a lot of warmth in that moment. You're, you, might, you might end up getting smacked around a little bit for being such a downer. So it's, I'm going to start with mindfulness and we'll take it from there. So let's talk a few minutes about catabolic energy. If you're able to see this video, you can see that I have a picture of a bottom of a, of a hole. It's essentially a, the, where a waterfall is pouring down into the bottom of a cave. So you're at the bottom. Catabolic energy is unproductive. And as a result, it's super hard to see your way out of catabolic energy when it hits. So imagine being at the bottom of a cave or at the bottom of a hole. And what you're really able to see is the light at the top, but neck around you, all around you, are walls that are nearly impossible to scale. In fact, it feels impossible. You might feel helpless. You might feel like a victim. You might feel like there's just no way out of this deep, deep lost feeling. That is catabolic energy. You can also experience it as anger or rage or the need to fight, but typically the fight is a win-lose kind of fight. Like you want to kill them or you want to get them, get even, they're going to pay. Those are the kind of thoughts you might have. This isn't fair. How could they do this to me? Those are the kind of thoughts you have if you're exhibiting really purely catabolic energy. And it's the kind of energy you're much more likely to have in a stressful situation. So if you are, certainly sheltering is a stressful situation, although once I sheltered, I actually felt a little more relaxed. But the idea of being cut off from our, um, the people we care about, from being cut off from our patterns and our behaviors and shopping and the kind of foods that we love and all the things that um, we're facing right now, that can really create some catabolic energy. And you can feel like you're at the bottom of a deep, deep pit. What's super important about this point of view, if you're at the bottom of the pit, is that it's really hard to know what your options are. When you are really feeling down, choices and um, whatabouts and if onlys are really hard to imagine. They feel completely out of reach. And that's what's so important about being, understanding that you're at the bottom of a pit when you have this kind of unproductive catabolic energy. Let me contrast that with anabolic energy. If your energy was anabolic, and in this case, it means that you uh, are able to see the world not as a victim. Imagine you climbed out of that hole now and you're up on top. Now you can see the possibilities. You can tell, let's say, what the weather's going to be because you're not at the bottom of the hole anymore. You could see where there's humans, other people that could help you if you were, um, let's say, out in the, in the wilderness at, at a cave, at the mouth of a cave. You would know where to get help because you can see. You've gotten yourself out of that unproductive energy. I know it's a metaphor, but it's a really powerful one because it will also help you when you think about helping others. 
if you can imagine and have the empathy to understand somebody in a catabolic state is really stuck in a pit, imagine your ability to empathize and to provide much more productive support knowing that they can't see the possibilities. And you rattling them off is not helpful, by the way. Just being there with them in that place of being stuck is okay for right now. What you'll eventually want to do is move them to where they start to fight and then ideally move them to the to anabolic energy. And that's what I'll tell you about right now. So anabolic energy is the productive kind of energy. And if you can imagine there's this crossover point where you go from wanting to fight someone and they're going to lose to then this place of almost um, productive complacency. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a kind of energy we use a lot to cope in life. It's the energy that allows you to deal with going to the store and getting the kids to school and driving, um, well, in the old days when we would drive places and dealing with traffic or, you know, just attending another meeting at work. You don't love it, but you don't hate it. You get it. It's important. It's the thing you're supposed to be doing. And it's, it's a complacent level of energy that is still productive. You might dip down a little bit into some catabolic energy, but you'll use that essentially to bounce back up. So you think about that first um, step into anabolic energy as being kind of that calm, go along to get along kind of energy. But the reality is in coaching, we know that there are four levels of energy that are anabolic. And as you move up this energy ladder, and we'll talk about that more in podcasts to come, but as you move up that energy ladder, you can really move from calm to inspired. The higher you go, the more you are able to detach from judgment detach from the here and now and start thinking about what could be, the more power that energy gives you. Now, again, if you're really high in your energy and you talk to somebody who's really low and catabolic and you bring your anabolic into a catabolic person, they might hurt you. That is not a good response and that's not a good way to share your energy. You really need to calibrate your energy to meet other people where they are and then work together to lift out. So think about your anabolic energy. Think about the things that when you're in the flow, when you feel really good, when you feel helpful, help, being helpful is very anabolic. Um, being will, willing to brainstorm and think of new ideas is very anabolic. Being able to detach from the here and now and think about what if is incredibly anabolic. These are the kind of things that will motivate you and inspire you, especially if we're still stuck at home or our world is somewhat limited. Ideally, with anabolic energy, the possibilities are endless. And that's, that's basically the most, that's the highest level of anabolic energy. It means you're able to come into the situation, whatever it might be, let go of all the parameters, rules, judgments, all the things that typically constrain how we think about something. Let go of those things and just think, what if? So this is a common coaching practice where we listen to our clients talk and they have ugh, all the rules about why something can't happen. My partner's not interested. My kids don't want to play. Um, we, or the car is not working right. We don't have the money. Those are all constraints that can limit your ideas. In coaching, we often work with you to let go of those, I, those constraints. And that's what I'm suggesting here. Let go of all the constraints and all your beliefs and think about what if, it was a perfect situation? Or what if I could have everything I wanted? What would that require? Some of these constraints that you're currently saddling yourself with may fall away. Uh, I, I coached another person this morning was talking about getting out of the house. Okay, now's not the time to get out of the house. And yet, maybe car trips are a way to get out of the house. You don't have to pack your food. Okay, that way you don't have any um, contamination vectors. You're going to tell the kids the rules or you're not getting out of the car. But you could go see some things you haven't seen before, especially with fewer people. So that's just a way to let go of some of the constraints. Don't leave your home. Don't spread the virus. Oh, please don't get in a car accident. But those ideas of ways to let go of the rules to find the, to meet the need that you have in a way you may not have thought of before. That's the idea of anabolic energy. And that's why it delivers to you endless possibilities as long as you're willing to let go of the rules that are holding you back or more importantly, the beliefs that you have that are holding you back. So 
this is a big one for me because I feel like the power of energy coaching is helping you have the skills to help others. And I've talked about this on my other podcast before. There's a great example I give, and I'm going to give it again here because I think it's so powerful and can shift the energy so quickly. And the example I like to talk about, because it was absolutely an artifact of our um, family dining scenario, is that, well, besides that, besides eat everything on your plate, which was another horrible, horrible artifact of our family dining. But the, um, the one I like to talk about is you sit down at the table. Someone's prepared the meal, typically mom, right? Someone's prepared the meal, is exhausted, sits down and wants to eat the meal. Other people at the table are ready to eat and they're hungry, if not hangry because they've been waiting for dinner and it never fails you all sit down which is an accomplishment you're ready to eat and one of the kids pops up instead of what would happen at our table every time is my dad would say jay sit down and just that negative shift would shut down my brother would shut down the table and now we all knew we were eating in a mad level of energy super catabolic, afraid to talk. What, how, who's going to be the peacemaker? Who's going to be the one that breaks the tension? But what if, what if we just tried one simple thing in that moment? And instead of using our frame of reference to assume we know what that kid's going to do, we said, what is your idea? If my dad would look at Jay and say, wait, what's your idea? And Jay said, I'm going to go get the salt and pepper. Mom forgot to bring it what a difference that energy shift would make. Now you just found out your kid is awesome. Your kid was going to get the things that you needed at the table, the salt and pepper. Nobody got mad. If anything, you're like, hey, thank you. That was really thoughtful. And the kid gets a, a nice reward for being a good citizen. That tiny, tiny shift from what was catabolic to anabolic, just by seeking to understand and asking, what's your idea? has a huge impact on the energy at that dinner table. Suddenly everybody smiles and we're having a nice meal. No awkwardness. You can use what's your idea in all kinds of circumstances. You can use it with your boss. You can, sometimes you might need to what you say, tell me more. That's another way to go at the same thing, which is tell me what you're, tell me what you're thinking about here because what you just heard the boss say really sounded dumb to you, but rather than stay in that catabolic energy, They'll press on and say, can you tell me some more about that? By the end of the discussion, as you seek to understand, you might actually end up saying, you know what? That makes so much sense that I'm going to not work on this other thing right now and focus on this, in which your boss goes, yeah, that's a great idea. You just shifted the energy. You didn't go catabolic, which was maybe your gut reaction at first to resist. And you've uncovered more information that's going to make you both happier. And now getting the job done becomes much more pleasant. That's a strategy you can use to do the energy shift. The next, oh, here we go. The next kind of energy shift is think about what matters most. So you're in the car traveling with the kids. It's rare right now, but it's classic. You're all together doing something. And you're paying attention to all the external forces going on. There is traffic or it's raining or um, the kids are squabbling in the back or craziness is going on somewhere that you're just so caught up in the external influences and they are making you mad. You are struggling, you're pissed, you're frustrated and you want everybody just to shut up and focus, which is really not true. You just want to be able to cope right now because things are hard. So if you think about what matters most in the moment, it's not all those external influences. They're gonna be there no matter what. If it's raining, it's not gonna stop raining. And if people are driving like idiots, you're not gonna be able to affect that either. But what does matter most is the people that you potentially care about, provided you're still speaking to your family, um, are in the car with you, and there's an opportunity maybe to find out what the squabbling is about, or to put on a cool song I recommend Bohemian Rhapsody myself. It makes for wonderful caroling in the car. But you could put on a song on the radio. You can shift the energy inside the car by first being mindful, aware of your own catabolic energy and the external forces that are trying to mess with your mood, and then shifting into something more positive so that you make the more experience, experience more possible, sorry, more positive for you and 
more positive for those of, in the, those of you, the rest of the people in your car, those with you. You can make that tiny, tiny shift and it can change everything. Might even be a memorable car ride based on that. Another energy shift, and this is the last one I'll talk about today, but another energy shift you can do is to absolutely ask yourself what is truly possible. This is a huge one if you're trying to solve a big problem, if you're collaborating with others, and a lot of us are still doing that with work, if you are stuck, in any way stuck. So the idea here is to, when you are stuck or frustrated, you tend to end up down in that catabolic energy at the bottom of the cave, cannot see a way out. But if you make that shift to ask yourself what's possible, so that means dropping away the rules, dropping away all those pre-existing beliefs and that negative talk and all the crap that usually comes with a project or comes with solving a problem, let that go, all of it, and ask yourself what's truly possible. You're going to need to be deeply honest with yourself. You're going to have to push. But this kind of anabolic energy could absolutely reveal new solutions to problems. And I'll give you an example that I used when I was first learning these techniques. I used it at work with a client. We were stuck. Oh my God, we were stuck. We were working on a piece of software. It was an um, online application. And we wanted to, we needed a way to differentiate. It, we were stuck. Like what we were doing was just abysmally normal. And we didn't have a secret sauce, a way to differentiate. And you know, I'm a marketing person and differentiation is everything. You've got to have a way to be special, right? Why us, not them? So I realized part of the reason we were so stuck, and again, I'm out on the outside, so I have a little bit of um, space to be able to think like this. It helps to be separate a little bit before the collaboration. But I realized we kept coming into brainstorming with all the same parameters. We had already decided there were a bunch of things we couldn't do. And I, I gotta say, frankly, for a bunch of stupid reasons, honestly, they had that baggage had been around for months. We had all bought into it, we had all believed it, and it were they and it operated like handcuffs. It was holding us back. So what I recommended to the leader of the group is that we needed to have a brainstorm that was truly a brainstorm. No, no rules at all, no parameters, nothing. All that garbage we've been carrying with us, we had to cut it loose. We had to say completely greenfield or whiteboard or however you imagine it. But if if there were no rules, if there were no limits, what might we do? That ended up creating a huge breakthrough for us because suddenly people were allowed to bring in ideas that we had long ago shot down. And with time and it looking at this in a whole new way, we were able to come up with some incredibly new ideas, fresh, uh, dare I say innovative. I, I don't know that they were particularly innovative, but they were definitely fresh. And the team, moreover, got highly, highly motivated again. We were in a funk. And this new approach absolutely got us fired up to take a new look at the problem and to potentially solve it in a way we'd never considered before. So don't be don't ever be afraid to ask what is truly possible because you have no idea what could come up. And as you start to look what the outcomes are, you don't have to worry about the path to get there yet. Just think about those out outcomes and then you can go back and start to look at what the path will need to be to get there. But don't limit yourself by that path right up front. Let yourself and your thoughts go. So that's a, a primer, as they say, on energy, catabolic, the unproductive kind of energy and anabolic the productive kind again think of it as a continuum you might tap catabolic energy to get mad about something so you're motivated to get anabolic absolutely happens catabolic energy can be very productive that way much like that uh, wave in an ocean that tumbles and tumbles sometimes you're on top sometimes you're down below sometimes you're in the green room and you get to just surf your way to heaven just know that those that energy moves all the time but the more you are mindful and can be aware of how you're feeling or how someone else is feeling the better job you'll be able to do to change the energy that you have at the time or change their energy and empathize so i'm going to be quiet now we have a few people on the line and if anybody wants to send a chat message and a question or wants to jump in and ask a question i am happy to hear it You know how I knew it was going to be crickets? Because I know who's on the line. 
and they're awesome because they are my biggest fans. They are my friends, and I appreciate you guys so much for coming today. If there aren't questions, I am going to wrap up the first show, and I'm going to tell you to come back tomorrow because tomorrow we are going to have Ron Johnson, who is a life coach. Um, I'm going to try not to emphasize how good looking he is because that's sexist, but uh, Ron is fantastic. We got to know each other through coaching, and I absolutely respect his practice. He takes a look, works with athletes who have um, either hit the wall or, more importantly, athletes who may have. Um, got an injury and really don't know how to cope when they can't do their exercise, which um, absolutely resonated for me. And I thought I need to get Ron on because this is the situation for a lot of people who are used to being out and about and are now having to think about how they take care of their bodies in a different way. So Ron will be here tomorrow. You can check him out at ronbusinesscoaching.com. And then of course, later this week, we'll have Melissa and um, Heidi on, Melissa to talk about nurturing your spirit and Heidi to talk about managing anxiety. I want to thank everybody for tuning in today. I will see you tomorrow at 1 p.m. Pacific time. LifeCoachPod.com for details. <laughs>